Based on a century of speculation, this elusive Eocene creature could have looked like anything between a giant wolf or a long and slender pig. But recent studies have revealed that this giant beast was likely part of the order that gave rise to modern whales. This might have been the largest mammalian predator to ever live. This is the mysterious Andrew Sarkis. Hi, I'm Tally Lowy Mary, and you're watching Paleologic. Andrew Sarkis mongoliensis, better known as Andrew Sarkis, was an extinct carnivorous mammal that lived in Inner Mongolia during the Eocene Epoch. The Eocene Epoch is the middle chunk of the Paleogene, the period immediately after the KPG extinction event, during which the dinosaurs famously went extinct. The word Eocene comes from the Greek word eos, meaning dawn, since it marked the dawning of a new age of organisms that are still roaming the planet today. With no more terrestrial dinosaurs around, the birds and mammals of the Earth had the run of the place, and they began to take over and diversify. The Eocene, which is sandwiched between the Paleocene and the Oligocene, saw the first cats, bears, and weasels, among many other large mammals. Most modern orders of birds also appeared during this time. The Eocene was a time of significant migrations for animals between continents in the Northern Hemisphere. For example, Amniodontids, a group of extinct hippo relatives, evolved in Central Asia at this time, but species ended up as far away as Europe and North America. The primitive hornless hoofed animal called Gobiotherium, which had a round head and enviable cheekbones, also lived in the Gobi Desert during this time. But the Eocene Epoch also gave rise to a lot of mysterious mammals that we are still struggling to understand, including Androsarchus. Ever since its discovery, Androsarchus has been a delicious puzzle that paleontologists have been yearning to solve. Andrew Sarkis was named after Roy Chapman Andrews, an American explorer, naturalist, and the leader of the Central Asiatic Expeditions of the American Museum of Natural History that took place in the 1920s. One of the most significant discoveries to come out of these expeditions into the Gobi Desert was the discovery of the first dinosaur eggs. Not to be overshadowed, though, these expeditions also unveiled the massive, incomplete skull of Androsarchus, which may have been the largest carnivorous mammal of all time. This Androsarchus skull was uncovered in Inner Mongolia, and it was massive. The skull measured almost a meter long, and it had a mouthful of enormous teeth. You would think that fossil evidence would give some definitive answers, but this mishmash of multipurpose teeth in Androsarchus actually led paleontologists on a century-long goose chase. The canines seem to be adapted for gripping, and the large cheekbones indicate a powerful bite. But Androsarchus also had flat molars in the back of its mouth. And since the lower jaw wasn't found with the skull, this only worked to deepen this dental mystery. And just what did Andrew Sarkis use those chompers for? We don't know exactly what it ate or even if it was a predator or a scavenger. Could it have preyed upon some of the other mammals that lived in similar regions during the Eocene? Perhaps it made a snack of the marmoset-like U primate Tylardina. Or maybe it chased down larger prey, like Arihippus tingai, the earliest Eocene horse ancestor found in Asia. Since this is the only example of an Androsarchus skull that's ever been found, it makes it that much harder to definitively know what this giant beast was like when it was alive and who today can call Androsarchus granddaddy. Because of its pearly whites, Androsarchus was originally misclassified as a mesonicid, a taxon of extinct wolf-like hoofed carnivores. Using the size of its skull and comparing it to the proportions of other mesonics, which were indeed much smaller, led scientists to believe that Androsarchus could have been more than three and a half meters long, 
almost two meters tall, and around 1,000 kilograms in weight. This would have made it around the size of a moose. If those proportions were correct, Androsarchus would have been the largest land-dwelling carnivorous mammal ever found. More recent studies, however, have essentially nixed the idea of Androsarchus being a mesonyx after all, meaning its giant size may not be as gargantuan as once estimated. Up until recently, it was also believed that mesonyx was an ancestor to modern whales, but new evidence has shown that mesonyx, you are not the father. This was all thanks to the astragalus, a very telling ankle bone. Mesonychids lack the telltale double pulley shape that would indicate that they were the ancestors of whales. But that wasn't the end of this whale of a tail, as Androsarchus and whales do actually have a lot in common. Artiodactyla is a wide-reaching order of about 270 even-toed ungulates that still live today including sheep, goats, chevrotains, deer, giraffes, and cattle. The largest of the land-dwelling artiodactyls is the hippopotamus. Whales, dolphins, and porpoises are also artiodactyls and are members of the aquatic side of the artiodactyla family. All artiodactyls have one thing in common, the telltale double pulley ankle bone. While no ankle bone of Androsarchus has ever been found, it turns out that those mysterious molars of Androsarchus proved to be similar to Entelodonts, an extinct group of artiodactyls that appeared during the late Eocene. These back teeth have since led Androsarchus to be reclassified as an artiodactyl itself. So while we now know that Androsarchus may not have been a mesonyx, and mesonics may not have been related to whales, Androsarchus was an artiodactyl and in the same order as whales, making Androsarchus and whales indeed related. Oh, how things can change in the topsy-turvy world of paleontology in just one century. Without more fossil evidence, however, scientists are limited in how much they can definitively know about Androsarchus and where it fits in the mammalian family tree. Here's hoping that we soon discover a full fossilized Androsarchus skeleton so that we can learn even more about this fascinating animal. So what should we talk about next? Please let me know in the comments and don't forget to subscribe for new episodes every week. Thanks for coming along on this journey through time. I'll see you later.